the restrictions that are taken will come in.
the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live. And even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor the any powers, neither height, nor depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Please be seated for a moment. We have come here today to remember before God, Jennifer Allen, to give thanks for her life, to leave her in the keeping arms of her God and Creator, Redeemer and Judge, to commit her body to be cremated and to comfort one another in our grief in the hope that it ours through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore we pray, here today, we may know the peace of God through Jesus Christ. Let us pray for a moment. Merciful Father, Lord of life, the conqueror of death, our ever help in every time of trouble, hear our prayers and comfort those who mourn. Give them grace in the presence of death, to worship you anew, and to put their trust in your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith that all who have died in the love of Jesus Christ will share in his resurrection with the life and reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Before we commence this service, may I just ask you kindly, politely, if you could put your mobile phones and silence. <coughs> the organist is very good at playing tunes. We don't need some of these fancy ringtones here. And I'm going to ask Brother Williamson, Dick Williamson, if he could just come and give us uh, an update on the, obviously you need to know certain health and safety issues, Brother Williamson. some of the health and safety rules that we'll ask you to observe. <coughs> the doors as you entered, also the door to my left, these are exit doors should there be an emergency. 
toilet facilities for the men to the door on my left and going upstairs. Toilet facilities for ladies to the door on my right going upstairs. There's also, because this is a big congregation, there are six toilets downstairs and these can be accessed by going to the door on my right going downstairs, the door on my left going downstairs. Adequate facilities. <coughs> There's also crash facilities for anyone with children. The crash facilities through the door on my right going upstairs. Our children should be properly supervised at all times with adults. Please, during the service, turn off your mobile phone. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon Williamson. I want to welcome you again. Sorry, such a sad occasion, but these are acts of life. You know, it's not easy when you are in this situation. Okay, my condolences to all your friends and family gathered here this morning. But uh, God has provided a lovely day. Amen. Amen. So let us rise as we sing our first hymn. How great thou art, how great thou art. Let us rise.
information. And I can only hear about three or four people saying it. And I know these some of might not be familiar to some of you, and some of you are quite uh, distressed, but I'm sure you like to raise your voice every this morning, okay? So the next thing I'm expecting you to just celebrate your life. That's what we're here to do, okay? You know, we're celebrating your life. There's a time for mourning, there's a time for praise, there's a time for whatever, but we are here to celebrate your life. Let us pray as we come to prayer. We're going to have the Bible reading in a moment, but I'm going to uh, do a prayer for the Bible reading. For the person who is doing the Bible reading, the Lord, uh, can you please make yourself ready as soon as we pray. Okay. Let us pray. Father God, we give you thanks and praise for life. We know that you are the giver of life. We, we come before you, Father God, recognizing that, Lord, our lives are in your hands. And Lord, you give and you take away. So this morning we come, Lord, to thank you for the life this morning, Father God, of our dear departed sister. We bring her before the throne of grace this morning and ask, Lord, that you would have mercy. We pray for those who are gathering here this morning, who are mourning the loss of friend, loved one, sister, brother, first cousin. We lift each person here to you. Lord Jesus, we are mindful that you wept at Lazarus' grave. The scripture tells us that blessed are those who mourn, but they shall be comforted. Therefore, I pray this morning, in your presence here, that you will comfort all those who are mourning, Father God. Give them the assurance of hope that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. And so this morning as we commit our dear sister to you, we ask God that they will have this hope and assurance that because Jesus rose from the grave, we have eternal life through Jesus Christ. We bless you and we thank you. And we ask these things in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Jenny's cheesecake to actually better than the cheesecake factory. Right? <laughs> so the right, the right head. She made a mean cheesecake after Jenny did a Philly ring. Ah. Oh gosh. So it's the small things again. It's like eating ice cream late at night, watching movies, or playing Super Nintendo games in the basement in America. I used to love our car drives too. I uh, used, used to look for any excuse to get in our Jenny's car. She had a, a black convertible Jeep. So anytime we get an opportunity, I'd be like, hey, can I come, can I come? We'll take up the roof and let that breeze. When I was much younger, one little story that my family told me because I'm too young to remember it. Um, my auntie Jenny was feeding me once. Um, and while she was feeding me, she said, ugh, eggs, disgusting. Um, by the time she tried to put the, the second spoonful in my mouth, I had decided eggs were disgusting too. <laughs> And from that moment, I stopped eating eggs because my auntie Jenny said they were disgusting. Um, although now I do eat scrambled eggs, and every time I eat an egg, I think of auntie Jenny, just like I see whenever I see a jeep. Now, auntie Jenny was quite popular with the guys too. Yeah. Um, men used to love her and always tried to talk to her. Now, I remember a few occasions when I was with auntie Jenny, and guys used to try to talk to her. Now. It used to annoy me a lot, I'm like, put me away from my honey, man, what's going on here? But after a while, after a while, I, I looked forward to it because I just wanted to see the reaction that, that a man was going to get when, Auntie, when he tried to speak to my Auntie Jenny. Now, sorry. Okay. Okay, sorry, sorry guys, sorry. Now, Oh, sorry guys, apologies, I said I wasn't going to do this guys. Now if you know my Auntie Jenny, you know my Auntie Jenny didn't take anything from anyone. And she didn't mix her words either. So there was this one time, we were in a shopping mall, and I remember pushing a, tro a trolley, and some guy came up to her and started talking to her. I don't remember, I don't know what he said to her. And the look my Auntie Jenny gave him was honestly, I, I wish you guys at the back could see, and I'd take my glasses off if I wasn't crying, but she was like, Mm -mm. <laughs> she used to do this thing, mm -mm. and the guy walked off embarrassed, and it was hilarious, absolutely hilarious, and I just I loved it. And again, like I said, I look forward to seeing after some guys talk to us today after that, because I wanted to see who the next victim was. <laughs> My auntie also taught me uh, something called nanya, okay? And um, for those of you who don't know, allow me to put this into context for you. So, um, she taught me this word that I, was to use for specific situations. And I couldn't find the right time to use it. So once I was in school, and my class friend was talking to me, and he was talking to me, I was listening, all right? And the teacher, who by the way did not like me, okay, let me make, make that shift, um, let, 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 let out there straight away. She shouted out, Anthony, care to share your conversation with everyone else? I said, no ma'am, no ma'am. And she said something along the lines of, well, it must be important if you feel the need to be talking while I'm talking. And I said, I wasn't talking, ma'am. She said, yes, you were, Anthony. I saw you talking. Again, quietly, I said, ma'am, I wasn't talking. <sighs> then she said, if you don't tell me what you was talking about, I'm going to kick you out of class. <sighs> so I said, Nanya. <laughs> and she said, excuse me? And I said, Nanya. <laughs> and then she said, Nanya what? None of your business. <laughs> okay, at that point, the class started laughing, and um, yeah, it never what happened. I got kicked out of class. <laughs> Sorry, mom. I used to give presentations as well in school um, where I used to work, and sometimes the crowd was difficult, um, very, very difficult to engage with, and I would always refer back to something that Auntie Jenny told me or taught me to break the ice, and it always, always, always worked. We spoke for hours and hours at times. We shared secrets. And I like to think that we really enjoyed each other's company because I really, really, really enjoyed hers. There was never a dull moment around Auntie Jenny. Even when she was feeling very poorly, she still had enough energy to say something funny. When I used to pose for photos, all I used to hear was, Anthony, stop making faces. Anthony, stop using your middle finger. That's all thanks to Auntie Jenny. <laughs> Auntie Jenny was a massive influence in my life. Amongst all the silly things that we used to enjoy doing, she always gave me good advice, which I use to this day. My auntie Jenny also played a huge, huge part in my life, um, with my wife, um, 
for which we'll forever be grateful for. Now COVID-19, like it did with most millions of people around the world, robbed me of the chance um, to see my auntie Jane during her tough times. I have to live with that, and believe me, it hurts like hell. I've never been hit harder with reality than what we've had to endure over the past few weeks. But I take comfort knowing that she's in a much better place, and I hope me and the rest of the family can do too. So, when you think of my auntie Jenny, I want you to smile and remember how beautiful she was, how funny she was, how honest she was, but most importantly, how loving and caring she was. <coughs> Heaven recently welcomed the most beautiful angel. Oh, I'm going to miss you all today. Thank you. There we go. Thank you, Anthony, for that loving review. Seems to me that you weren't really a nephew, more like a brother, a protective brother. Does he? Yeah, see that? Brothers are like that, you know. They don't like to see um, guys hanging around their sisters, much less their auntie. So well done, young man. You look after your auntie. Keep those black boys away from her. Um, we're going to sing another hymn, and uh, we're going to take an offering uh, this time. Now, you all promised me you're going to sing, yes? You all, I heard you. You said, yes, I'm going to lift. Come, I'm going to lift up those voices this morning. Great is thy faithfulness, and during this song we're going to take an offering, okay? So don't let me sing alone, because I don't want my voice to go. I need, I need you to help me sing this morning. Amen? Let us pray.
great is thy faithfulness unto thee. We thank you that you are a faithful God. We thank you, Father God, that this morning as we come, we give you thanks for the offering that has been collected here. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you'll bless it, multiply it, and use it for the furtherance of your kingdom. For we are truly thankful. And we ask these things in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Please be seated. I must comment on your attires, your outfit. It really looks nice. Perhaps someone will tell me later on what exactly does it mean. It symbolizes something. I noticed that the order of service is also colorfully green. So it must be a connection. So please someone tell me later on. But may I say how lovely you all look. Yes. Thank you. Now we're going to have a Bible reading. And it's going to be read for us by Zoe. Yeah, it's very comfortable with The names are getting easier to pronounce, you know, as I'm going to Come on, Zoe. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going to that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Thank <laughs> you. 
only so that we could buy chicken and chips. Time to play. Because of the sugar this week, one fell in love. I said, my mom fell in love. So we just had to keep lying and lying and hoping that we wouldn't get found out. And you know what? We never got found out to this day. We laughed about it not that long ago. And thank God he was on our side. We still enjoy our chicken and chips. Jenny, I love you. May your soul rest in eternal peace. I will miss you. But you've left a legacy with a lot of people. You know, your laughter, your joy, your, you know, your honesty, telling people how you felt, just the look, you'd look at people. And Jenny, I just love you and I'm just grateful to God for all the time we shared together that will live on in me forever and ever. I thank you guys.
this is going to be hard and look forward. Every plan in my life revolved around my mom. Every single one. Um, I think it still will, in all honesty. Everything that I do to this point on will be to honor my mother. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much to my family for being with me through this every step, even forcing me to eat. <laughs> Reminding me that my mom is looking over me and pouring into me. I think that I got a lot of exposure being able to, to being able to prepare her, um, and I'm just really grateful for that opportunity as well. So thank you all very much, mom. I love you with all my heart, with all my being. You are forever a part of me. I have always been a part of you, and I thank you. I am only who I am because of you, and I thank you so much. I love you, Jennifer. I love you.
just so, so much fun. I mean, we used to party, man. <laughs> we love, we, we parted from Apollo. We got to New York, the Q Club, Bass Line, Nakaseki on Long Island. <laughs> boy, oh boy, we had fun, man. Jones Beach. Carrying heavy, heavy nephew Christopher. <laughs> but, uh, we had some fun. Wow, I can't believe that. This is hard. Well, I want to thank all, all the Elstonians. <laughs> I want to thank family, friends, everyone for being here. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. I'm not going to miss you, but she talks to me every day. We communicate every day. Uh, oh, man. Love you, Jenna. Love you. Jenny, she would always, she made a difference in everyone's life. She made a difference in everyone's life. You know, she, she, she didn't judge anyone or anything. She was just Jenny. You know, and I'm going to miss her. You know. She loved peace. She loved her own space. She listened to whoever. She would listen to everyone who had problems and gave great advice. She also, she loved without receiving. She just loved to love. She is love. Um, Jennifer Fonsoir Adine, <laughs> Jenny, was born April 6, 1966, in Park Royal Hospital with Adina Adine and her late father, Cedric Adine. When the nurses first saw Jenny, they nudged each other and said, Oh, boy, she's white, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jenny, was, Jenny always stood out in the crowd, you know, for her beautiful green eyes. Growing up, she lived in Halton, London, along with her four siblings, Sandra, Eddie, Vincent, and Julie, her first seven siblings, and then great growth. She attended Oldfield Primary School and then Elfield Secondary School. In secondary school, Jenny developed many friendships for her best friend, whose primary school was Valerie's primary school. Jenny and Valerie were always together. Even when they were not together, they said they were together to cover for each other. <laughs> <laughs> if you knew Jenny, you know she was a magnet. First point in by her beauty and wit, you stuck around because of her sincerity, candor, and cunning heart. Jenny was always popular bringing laughter and color wherever she traveled.
Michelle proceeded to push the door to no avail. Michelle said, I can't open it. Again, Jenny said, it's open, just push. You must be weak, that's what Jenny said. So Michelle continued, excuse me, to push the door. Eventually, Mum told Jenny to open the door. Jenny opened the door and said, Oh, I thought it was open. By this time, Michelle walked in and she was sweating. <laughs> bruised her shoulder. But that was also in love. In 1987, Jenny migrated to Uniondale, New York. While in New York, she first worked at GMAC, then home base in, in the receiving department, all while attending NASA Community College. Jenny was not only beautiful and caring, she was also very intelligent. She was accepted into a prestige Columbia University in New York City. She had plans to becoming a lawyer. Jenny had an entrepreneur an entrepreneurial attitude, spirit, and always encouraged those around her to focus on their dreams, their motivation, and, mo and motivated them to believe in all things are possible with God and hard work. Many of us wouldn't be where we are today without Jenny's advice, and many of us would be better off if we followed that time. It was in New York. Jenny had her greatest accomplishment, her daughter and her best friend, Mercedes, Mimi. As a mother, she took great pride, giving Mercedes all she could, pouring her all into her, giving her love unconditionally and developing such a bond which made them inseparable to the end. When Mimi was six years old, Jenny was diagnosed with lupus, a debilitated autoimmune disease. Looking for independence at a very difficult time in her life, Jenny migrated back to London in 2000. Even while in pain, she was extremely empathetic and would take on the burdens of family and friends as if it was her own, giving heartfelt advice to those she loved. She would also give the shirt off her back. Jenny fought through the pain for too many years. She had more courage than any one of us, and all of us together. Never giving up hope, giving her life to Christ, she is now in a better place. She is now great. No more pain, no more suffering. Now, dancing in the presence of the Lord. She leaves behind her beloved mother, Sabina Lee, daughter Mercedes Pilar, sister Sandra Pines, and brother in law Eric Pines, brother Eddie, Ali, sister Ali, and sister Julie McCoy. She will continue to guide her nieces and nephews, Clarissa, Chiron, Anthony, Christopher, Kunar, Davina, Sunise, Marika, Kia, Lamar, Sarai. Jorea, sorry. Jalal, Kashai, Yanni, and Zoe. She was blessed to see many of her nieces and nephews become parents, making her a great aunt. To Kabari, Kyrie, Rion, Mikkel, Maya, Ellie, Sakai, Maria, Ty, Tola, Roman, and Thea. Aunts, uncles, and cousins. Jenny will be missed by all who had the pleasure of knowing her. Jenny, we love you. We love you. Thank you.
at here. She's got the look of. Does anybody know Lisa Bonnet from? Yeah. Lisa Bonnet. Yeah. Is it from that? Yeah, because she looks just like Lisa. Yeah, she was a good step on that beautiful girl. And from what I've heard this morning, not only beautiful on the outside, but beautiful on the inside. And that's a lovely trait to have when someone can talk to this. What we talk about legacy. When someone talks about the legacy that someone's left behind, it's not always the financial legacy. Financial legacies can be blown overnight. But when you when you leave behind something of a legacy that someone can live on, not finance, but the memories, the fun memories, that's what I call true legacy. And so Renee has left that behind. And I can understand why you all here look sad, because it, it is a sad day. But I want to encourage you to turn the sadness into joy. I want to encourage you to turn the sadness into joy. And I understand why you're sad, because you see, when you lose someone, a loss of a loved one brings pain. And because of the loss, there is a longing to be with that person. It's not always easy. And I want to go back to one of the readings that was done earlier in John chapter 14. Jesus was aware that his disciples were going to share that same suffering like what you are going through here this morning. And Jesus, the Bible tells us that he was a man of sorrow and familiar with suffering. You know, and if you're here this, this morning and you, you, you're mourning this afternoon, he knows what you're going through. And that's why the scripture tells us that blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Comforted by the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. Jesus is aware of his disciples' grief that was coming upon them because of his pending death. So he says to them in verse 1 of chapter 14 of John, he says, Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. Now, we talk about trust, and some people use the word trust in different ways. But the trust that Jesus is referring to here is saying, believe in me. Take me at my word. Take me at my word. Trust is very important. You have someone who you can confide in, someone of you, you, you talk to about something, and you you trust that person, no matter what, that person is going to hold that your secret, take it to the grave possibly. And so you can trust that person. And Jesus said, that's me. You can trust me because I am going to make you a promise. Because the word trust brings about assurance. The Bible says in Psalm 125, it says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. Anybody knows about Mount Zion? It's the city of God. It's that mountain where the Mount Zion was the city of God. The temple was built in a rock, a solid rock, a temple of God. And he said, Its foundation shall not be shaken. So when you put your trust in God, your foundation, your faith, your belief will not be shaken. But he says in verse 2, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. Now, I like this version, but I prefer the other one that says that In my Father's house, kingdom, there are many mansions. Because I believe for the believer, a believer will receive more than just a room. You know, when it, God does things, He's not doing things by small measures. We've heard stories, some of us here this morning. Your parents traveled from the West Indies. And when they came over to England, they couldn't afford to buy a house. So they used to share a room. Or they used to rent a room. I've heard stories that there was one room, and one person used to have that room for the day shift, and another person used to have that room for the night shift. So one day this guy came over from the day shift, not feeling well, expecting to come back to his room. I said, no, that's for the guy in the night shift. And so he couldn't go into his room. So God is not going to prepare a room for you. He's prepared a mansion. Amen? And so Jesus, he said, if you trust in me, if you believe in me, I will prepare a place for you. 
trust me. And he said, if I go, if I go and prepare a place, I will come back and bring you back to be with me. Jesus is saying this morning, take me at my word. In the words of Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Terminator, I'll be back. And that's what Jesus is saying. If you believe in me, if you trust in me, I'll be back. And I'm coming back to you. That song we were singing that we were struggling to sing, when we all get to heaven, what a glorious rejoicing that will be. And indeed, it will be rejoicing. But there's one thing, if you want to get to heaven, trust. You can't just walk him. You have to trust Jesus. This morning I'm saying to you, Jesus is God to prepare a place. And he said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back to take you with me, that you also may be where I am. And isn't that a wonderful promise? For the disciples, they walked with Jesus for three years, and now he was about to be taken away from them. There was a loss, and there was grief for them. They felt the grief, the hurt, the pain of losing someone. Nothing greater than losing a loved one, someone that you're so close to. You walk the journey with that person, and all of a sudden, there is a separation. And that separation has brought grief and pain and sorrow in the hearts of all those who have lost loved ones. We heard some stories this morning of those who have lost family, friends, and close ones. And it hurts. It's painful. But you have the assurance, if you are trusted in Jesus, that one day you will see that person again. Amen? If you are trusted in Jesus, God is I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to take you that you also may be where I am. Now, we, Jesus says here in verse 4, he says, you know the way to the place I'm going. Now, of course, if you know anything about Thomas, they call him Thomas the Doubter. Because Thomas is not one who easily believes things. But Thomas was a question that many of us will be asking, Lord, I don't know where you're going. So how can I follow you if I don't know where you're going? Jesus says to Thomas, Thomas, you do know the way. You do know the way. And Jesus says, I am the way. And to many people that doesn't make sense saying I am the way. What does I am the way mean? It simply means that if you are following Jesus, you'll never lose your way. Amen? If you are following Jesus, you will never lose your way. A prominent theologian once asked by someone, what is the way to heaven? What is the way to heaven? And the theologian says, you turn right and go straight ahead. You, get that? you turn right. Turn right to right living and follow Jesus. Listen, these promises are trustworthy and true because Jesus says, trust me. Trust me, take me at my word. There are many mansions in my Father's kingdom. And when we look in the book of Revelation, it gives us something of the kingdom of God, what awaits us, the pearly gates, the streets of gold. It talks about the brilliance, the awesome brilliance of Jesus, of the, 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 um, the, the street, pure fair play with gold. But for you who are trusting in Jesus, I want you to know this day, Today, that if you're trusting in Him, He will come back for you. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? Have you ever been to an airport before where you're waiting for a loved one to come back? And you're waiting, you have seen this person maybe for a year or two or three years. And the sheer joy of ex and excitement on your face when you see that person coming through that gateway. Preferably not be stopped by customs. But coming through the gateway, what joy, what excitement. And Jesus said, that's what it's going to be like. When I come back, there's going to be joy. So right now you are crying. Right now you are mourning because of the separation. What I want you to know is a time is going to come when I'm going to come back to you and there will be rejoicing in heaven. But there's a condition. 
And I want to stress this because so often people just think, well, you know, you know, the priest is going to stay before it. But the key to all of this is trust in Jesus. And I want you to leave this place this morning. Jennifer had a life, a difficult life, but she made the best of it, you know. Sounds like she had a tough one before her illness. But she, she made the best of it. She lived her life to the full. And that's what Jesus offers you if you are here this morning and if you are trust in Him. If you are trusting in Him, He said, I've come that you might have life and have life in abundance. Not just for the here and now. So what is, if you are to consider life to be this short period of space of 60, 70, 80, 90, or 100 years, if you consider this to be life, I will say to you, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because what Jesus has prepared for you is, is a million times more better than this. This is just a, a blip, a period of life. You know, it, it talks about death. It talks about life. But nobody guarantees how long they are going to live. Nobody knows how long they are going to live on this earth. Moses, one of the greatest leaders in the Old Testament, in Israel, in Psalm 90, he says to God, Teach me, God, teach us. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom, that we may understand that even in this life, it is momentary, it is so short. For those of you who are the Hailstones crew here this afternoon, some of you here from Hailstones crew, I'm listening to you talking, so I kind of gauge your age. I am from the best school that was down the road, South Kilburn. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, South Kilburn. My sister went to Hailstones, but I went to South Kilburn. But you're of that age. You know, you're in your mid-50s, and perhaps some of you are a bit slightly older and younger. But I can say this much, and, and it is absolutely true. Sad about all of this. They lost a the loved one. They were sad. They started asking questions about the resurrection and so on. And, and Paul says something in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18. Therefore, Encourage one another with these words. And so I want to encourage you this morning, this afternoon, like you say, to trust God. Trust also in Jesus. He's gone to prepare a place for you if you are trusting in this morning. Trust in God. Be encouraged. Encourage one another. And as I close, you're going to spend time talking to one another about them. Her life, the legacy that she has left behind, the beautiful daughter, I mean, you know, it, it, it is all wonderful. There's so much to talk about. It's good, but you know something? You know, people talk about you when you're alive, about you behind your back. When you're alive, they say things about you behind your back. But isn't it wonderful to know that when you're no longer on earth? They can't talk behind your back anymore. No, they can't. But it's even more wonderful when you've left behind a legacy that they can talk about publicly. We heard some of them this morning. God being up here talking about how wonderful she was, and truly that was the case. You can talk as much as you want, but what she has left behind is more than anything else, a loving legacy. So may God bless you all this morning as we close this service now. Remember and trust God. Trust in God. Let me just close before we uh, pray. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your word that reminds us that you are gone away to prepare a place for us. For those of us who are in Christ Jesus, for those of us who are, of us who are trust in Jesus, and Lord, we thank you for your word that tells us that if you go, you will come back. And that you will prepare, you will prepare a place for us, a mansion, not a room, but a mansion to be with you. So, Lord Jesus, this morning, this afternoon, we thank you as we complete this celebration of Kenny's life. We thank you for her life. We thank you for the many tributes 
We thank you for his testimony, for all that was said about her. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that now she is with you in glory. And we ask, Lord Jesus, that you will comfort those who are here, family and friends. Comfort them as they continue to mourn her loss. And Lord, we pray, may she rest in peace and rise in glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for coming this morning. It's our home. And uh, I will show you what's going to happen afterwards. I'm going to show you the most fun memories of Benny and the same in the rest of the family in the prayers. And just keep supporting. I know what we focus on life. We don't just do the person just hanging. I did put some of these homes up for funerals a week later. Folks don't bring anymore. People don't fall, people don't fall. She's going to need your support. Just continue to support her, encourage her. The process actually it is a long one, an extremely long one. And she's going to need all the encouraging, all the encouragement from you. That's what's going to keep her going through this dark, dark season. I know it. That the latch, I hold it. Hold it, give me the hold it. Hold it, give me the hold it.
coming down now. Yeah, we're coming down. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're coming down.